Hi, uh, welcome to uh, the video lesson for um, November 16th through the 20th. You're going to have two assignments this week, one to complete on your first day of asynchronous learning and the second to complete on your second day of uh, asynchronous learning. And while we're in school, we're going to be dedicating all of our time from now until November break and from November break until uh, the December winter break on getting our uh, book project 2020 completed. So that's something that's gonna be very different. There's gonna be a lot of independent work time in the classroom with myself and Miss Megan. And if you're in the um, fourth mod class, Eli, and our new friend, uh, Caitlin. Um, so here we go. Share my screen. Okay. All right, so as you can see, I'm opened up to Google Classroom here for November 16th to the 20th. You go to Classwork and I'm going to open up the weekly work menu. You can see that um, Monday and Tuesday for our Lakers, it's Book Project 2020, Artwork and Editing. Myself and others will be there to uh, help you edit your book. Then on Wednesday, we're going to have our How To Wednesday. And one of the assignments is going to help people uh, be guided toward what you're going to be expected to do on Wednesday. For asynchronous learning, uh, you're going to be watching this video and then going to Google Classroom and filling out the how-to. That's going to count as a PA grade in the grade book. And then on your second day of asynchronous learning, you're going to be working on a research for social justice topic for a mini research project. And what you're going to be expected to do this week is find two to three sources and link them into the assignment and um, that will be worth a CA grade for this week. The research project is, uh, mini research project is going to be ongoing um, for now until we get finished with it in about mid-December, where we'll then be presenting our research projects to each other in class. And as you know, the champs, you will be doing all of this online work first, then having your meeting with me, and then doing uh, your editing and your book project work while you're in class. So let me get right over here into uh, Google Classroom and here is the how-to activity. We shared this with you Wednesday uh, to give you a look at it. Miss Megan created this and I really like it so I'm assigning it to you to complete. What, what you're going to do is you're going to be thinking about something that you can teach to the rest of the class on Wednesday when we meet together remotely. So these are uh, some writing instructions over here. So how to, you will need equipment, ingredients if you're doing something like a recipe, first, next, then, when, after, before, put, add, turn, make, attach, cook, cut, take, until, once, twice, don't, always, never, must, because, and repeat. So what you will do is in this box, you'll talk to us and write down what it is you're going to teach people to do. So for example, um, I taught people, right, how, to play a C chord on the guitar. So that's all you have to do right there. Then in these boxes, you're going to give your steps. First, next, then, now, finally. So that's up to you. I might say, first, get out the guitar. 
R and place your pointer finger on the second ring first fret. And then I would go on from there describing my steps for how to teach. This is the part of the assignment that will take a little bit of time, all right? And then when you're done down here, you might think about how it is you want to present that. Are you going to create a video? Are you going to create a slide deck where you can go through the steps with everyone? Or are you just going to have whatever it is you're showing um, the class to do in front of you on the Zoom on Wednesday? Um, any way that you want to do it is okay. And um, we'll be looking forward to our people who are going first um, this Wednesday. So those people are um, going to be from the champs group and you know who you are. All right. Now, the assignment for the next day is this mini research project. So I'll open it up here. Here's the directions. The Many Research Project will be a three-week project that involves researching your social justice issue and then presenting your findings to the class during our remote Wednesday class. This week, you're responsible for reading through my example project and finding two to three resources that will help you understand your topic. This is a CA and the finished product and presentation is going to be a triple A. So I'm gonna open that up for you now so that you can see it. Here's the rubric. It is a self-selected inquiry project. In order for you to be achieving, you're going to have to be able to present an understanding of an idea or an event by integrating specific well-chosen evidence. Your evidence being what you find on the um, sources that you gather. My sources are correctly documenting using in the MLA format. I'm gonna go over that now on the sheet. Uh, so I'm glad that you're listening to the video. That'll be helpful, more helpful than just reading about it. And then for language and style, I can produce clear and coherent writing for a variety of purposes and audiences with accurate language, conventions, and styles. So here's the assignment. Choose a topic related to social justice. We will brainstorm a list of various topics below these instructions. I will consider other thoughtful topic choices not from the list, but they must be approved. Once you have your topic narrowed down, avoid having such a broad topic that you're swimming with information. For this assignment, create a Google document which outlines the key details about your chosen topic, your reactions, appropriate images, and your MLA citations. Please see the example below. So last week, we read an article that highlighted a few social justice uh, topics. One of them was climate change. The other was LGBTQ rights. Another was addiction and mental illness. Another one was refugee and immigrant uh, immigration issues. And the other was racism and bigotry, which is one we spent a lot of time talking about while reading the book Ghost Boys. I also gave you an opportunity to look at several graphic novels. So you could use one of those as your sources if you like. They'll be in the classroom for you to take a look at. Now this is how you do an MLA format. It follows an author page method of in-text citation. This means that the author's last name and the page numbers from which the quotation or paraphrase is taken must appear in the text and a complete reference should appear on your work cited page. So here's an example. Here's three different ways that you can do an MLA citation, depending on how it is you wanna present the evidence in your research. So Parker Rhodes stated that bearing witness is telling your cultural story and has long been crucial to African American communities. And we got that on page 208 in the text ghost boys right that she wrote and she's the one that wrote it so this is what that type of citation would look like notice that the period goes on the outside of the parentheses um and at this point we don't have her name in here because her name is right here 
Now, if you want to talk about this quote without using her name in the writing, you would do it like this. Bearing witness is characterized by telling your cultural story and has long been crucial to African American communities. So at this point, you're going to need to give her credit by putting her last name there and the page number that you found it on. And if you notice the parentheses and the period look the same, we've just added her name in here because you haven't included it here. And here's the third and final way you could have quoted this. This is not a direct quote. This is what we call a paraphrase. So you're not taking a word by word um, out from the text. You are using your own words to talk about the idea. So here it is. Parker Rhodes examines the concept of bearing witness in African American communities. That was put into your own words, but has very much the same meaning as these directly quoted uh, citations here. So next, when a source has no known author, you use the title of the work instead of an author's name. Place the title in quotation marks if it's a short work, such as an article, or italicize it if it is a longer word, i.g. plays, a book, a whole television show, or like an entire website. So, begin your works cited page on a separate page. At the end of your research paper, it should have the same one inch margins and last name, page number, header as the rest of your paper. Label the page works cited. Do not italicize works cited or put them in quotation marks and center the work cited at the top of the page. Double space all citations, but do not skip spaces between entries. Indent the second and subsequent lines of citations by a 0.5 inch to create a hanging indent. Entries need to be in alphabetical order. So here's an example right here of citing an entire website. You notice that this is in italics because it's the entire website. Then you have where it came from, the writing lab and OWL at Purdue and Purdue U, the date that the site was there, and the website, and the day that it was accessed. That's when you as the person doing the research went to the website and accessed the web page. Now this is a different one. This is when you have an author. So here she is, Dino uh, Fagula. You put the last name first, then a comma, then the first name. Then in italics, you write down what the name of the paper was, what was the title of the paper. It came again from Purdue University and this was when it was published. Here's the website that you found it on and here's when it was accessed. So that's the order that you do things. And these are here for an example. And now here's an example of how you cite a web page, if that's what you're going to use as your source. So this web page was titled Athlete's Foot Topic Overview from WebMD. And it was accessed on the 25th of September, 2014. Then here's the website. Notice it's indented from here. And then the date that it was accessed. And here's another one, except this one had the author's name. So we put the author's name first, then the last name, then we have the title, how to make vegetarian chili. It was found on eHow. And then here's the website right here and the date that it was accessed. Okay, so that's very confusing and I know that's gonna take a lot of work. And that's why this is a three week project. Don't worry too much about this until you find your sources, and then we can work together to figure out how to do this properly. The reason I'm teaching you this, even though it may seem very tedious, is because it's an important skill to have, especially if you plan on going to college, and especially if you'd like to be able to independently write your research papers here at CHS. This is what your teachers expect you to do. You need to have works cited page where you show where you got your information from. We don't just go to websites and copy and paste information from a website, turning it into our teachers, telling them that we wrote that. That's called plagiarism and it's not acceptable. And in some colleges, you can even get kicked out of the school for doing that. 
So I want to teach you how to cite your sources properly. And this is the beginning of learning how to do that. We're even going to have Miss Frankie Binder come in and she'll be helping us as well. She's our school librarian and she's an extremely helpful resource in order to learn how to do this very important skill of citing um, your work. So now I'm going and moving down to my example. This is an example uh, research project. And for today, I'm, I'm uh, going to um, just give you my example. It is um, the topic I decided to select was advocating for mental health awareness. So I put topic here and then I put my here and then I have a quote about it that I took from the source. So with one in four of our neighbors, friends, family members, and coworkers living with mental illness, everyone needs to know the warning signs. Educational efforts increase awareness so we can all help each other when we need it. And that came from the National Council for Behavioral Health Topic of Inquiry. I found two sites here. One of them was an article. So I had the author's name and one of them was just a website and I did not have any author. It was just a website that was created with lots of information. And these are the two sites that I used. And then I also found an image that I thought would be very helpful um, in sharing the information with the class. And it was a picture of someone pulling down and reaching up to somebody who needs help. And it says, never look down on someone unless you're helping them up. And I really thought this was an excellent image. And here's where I got it, because we also need to do a better job making sure we give credit to whoever creates images, pictures, and photos online. We don't just take those and put them into our presentations without letting people know who it was that created that image, okay? That's their intellectual property. So these are the key details that I found from um, my two research topics, and I'll read them to you now. Um, uh, this website helps a person learn how to advocate for mental health awareness. I also found out that making a difference for mental health starts with ourselves, and we can tell our stories or support changes in mental health legislation. The website has resources for all the following topics. Help someone in need, get educated, raise awareness in your community, share your story, be vocal on campus, ways to take legislative action, latest news and advocacy update, and take action for your community and talking on issues, taking on issues, pardon me. The next detail I found was that the links take you to articles and other websites that are helpful in learning about how to be an advocate for mental health issues. The website can also help a person who's suffer, suffering with strategies and advice. Um, then I um, started talking about the second source, this article that I read that was titled Friendship and Depression, How to Support a Friend Who's in Emotional Pain. And then I started adding my detail points here. Um, mental illness and depression can scare friends away. There's no timeline for curing depression. So friends can get frustrated and believe that a person isn't trying to get better. Uh, depression does not stop people uh, from wanting to be with other people, but they may not have the ability. Um, a friend who is depressed needs a safe space in order to vent their feelings. And depression is an illness, and a person uh, just can't get over it. So here are all the key details that I jotted down from examining the two sources that I found that are related to the topic that I chose, which was mental health awareness. This is pretty much what your final product is going to look like. And then you're going to um, figure out a way to present that information to us. Again, you can make a video, you can do a slide deck, you could write a dialogue between two people that share the information, a little short kind of prose if you want. You can have a bunch of images uh, and directing people to the different websites. How you're going to present your information will be up to you and we'll do that at the very end of the project. But for this week, what you are responsible for doing is 
reading through this. So if you've listened to the video, you can check that off. And then the next thing you need to do for this week is select which issue you would like to research and then go ahead online and find two to three sources. So I'm going to show you what that might look like. If I were to come here, okay, and type in mental health in Vermont. Maybe I want to do it in Vermont. And here we go. I'm going to find some different sources. Adult mental health service, mental health scorecard, mental health resources in Vermont. Maybe I want to take a look at that. And oh, I really like this. Look, mental health resources in Vermont. And it's going over all the different resources that you can find in Vermont. Well, I'm going to start reading it. I'm going to think, oh, well, maybe that doesn't have enough information for me. So I'm going to go back and maybe I'm going to check this one out. So this is what you do. You just kind of go along and you take a look and you see, is there something that you want to look at and read and present to the class? That's just gonna take you a little time. It says mental health care in Vermont. It's just a never ending battle. And then you can start reading Montpelier, mental health providers in Vermont say they continue to be concerned that the state still has gaps in services available to people struggling with mental illness. And then you can see right here, this is a spot where some people get treated in Brattleboro and maybe that's what you uh, are interested in. So you go then ahead and come up here. You hit uh, uh, right click, copy, right? Then you can kind of come over to here. And maybe I want to add that one to my resources. And I might come down here, right? Enter. I didn't do it yet, but there we go. Paste. And there it is. Now, when you get a nice website like this, if you want to learn, be able to cite it really well, you can go to um, a generator called EasyBib. EasyBib is, is a website that helps you um, generate a source. Um, and I will show you guys how to use that in school. That'll be a little bit easier to show in person. So for now, if you can just get your websites, copy and paste and link them and put them under Works Cited, then as a class, we can work together with how you make that look exactly the way it needs to be. And we'll have Ms. Finder come in and she can check our work and make sure that we're doing it right because it's a pretty difficult thing to do the Works Cited page. It's not, it's not really easy, okay? But it's doable if you follow the directions. So there we go. So that's it for this week. Just two assignments uh, that you need to complete um, during your asynchronous time. The first one is the how-to activity. And then the second one is to get started on researching your social justice topic. Okay, see you in school Monday or Thursday, and I'll see everybody on Wednesday. Have a good day.